Good morning, it's um, Thursday, February the 23rd. Today I'm going to revisit the Harlem Renaissance again and bring a name up, uh, Frank Marshall Davis, born in 1905. And in around 1910, he was nearly killed by some older white children um, who, um, who, who confronted him as a five-year-old because they had uh, heard about uh, lynching black people and and they want Frank that they wanted to try it out on Frank Frank managed to escape that lynching Frank managed to escape that lynching at five years old and he had a significant impact on the history of our black community because over time Frank eventually moved to Hawaii he lived in Hawaii. He raised, I think, five children or six children in Hawaii. But one of the most significant uh, experiences in Frank's life, and he didn't even realize it because he had already been dead 20 years when this young man became the first elected black president of the United States, Barack Obama. Barack actually met Frank Marshall Davis through his great through his grandfather in Hawaii and and his grandfather used to take him over to Mr. Davis's home and Mr. Davis had an impact on uh, Barack Obama as a teenager growing up in Hawaii and and also um, led Mr. Uh, president uh, the new pre the future president Obama to tip his tip his dip his toe into poetry Frank Marshall Davis was a product of Chicago. He, 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 although he grew up in Arkansas City, Kansas, he also attended um, Kansas State Agricultural College, which was which is now Kansas State University. Mr. Davis also was a jack of all trades in the publishing industry. He, he did sports. He did entertainment. He was a music critic. He was everything, but he was also very talented. Frank Marshall Davis influenced Barack Obama, as a matter of fact, 20 years after his death in 1987. It, it was Frank Marshall Davis who was accused of being the individual or the man who turned Barack Obama into a communist. All Frank Marshall Davis did was probably opened Barack Obama's eyes to the nature of being black in America. So I'm going to uh, do a few of his poems this morning and salute, salute the incomparable Frank Marshall Davis. First up, Chicago's Congo by Frank Marshall Davis. Chicago is an overgrown woman wearing her skyscrapers like a necklace. Chicago's blood is kaleidoscope. Chicago's heart has a hundred oracles. From the Congo to Chicago is a long trek as the crow flies. Sing to me of a red warrior moon victorious in a Congo sky. Show me a round dollar moon in a ragged blue purse of Chicago's heaven. Tell me of a hundred spore laden blacks trampling home from the raid. Point me out a hundred brown men riding the elevated home on payday. Pick me the winners in Chicago, in the Congo. Skyscrapers, pinnacles, rip great holes in the rubber balloon bag of the sky. Do spears kill quicker than the printed words? Midnight lies and cobra fangs. Ask me if civilization produces new forms of pitting and tearing and killing. See three million whites and 200,000 blacks civilized in Chicago. From the Congo to Chicago is a long trek as the crow flies. 
I'm a grown up man today in Chicago. My bones are thick and stout. When I moved to new district, bombings couldn't break them. My flesh is smooth and firm. Look, the wounds you gave me heal quickly. See how the muscles ripple under my night black skin. My strength comes not from resting. You should be proud of me, Chicago. I got a lion's heart and a six-shooter. I got a fighter's fist and five newspapers. I got an eye for beauty and another for cash. Nothing you've got I can't have. A song dashes its rhythms in my face like April rain. My song is a song of steel and bamboo, of brick flats and reed huts, of steamboats and slim canoes, of murder trials and jackal packs, of con men and pythons. My tune I get from automobiles and lines roaring from the rustle of banknotes and the teller's window and the rustle of leaves and the transfold trees. I ask you to find a better song, a louder song, a sweeter song. Here's something Wagner couldn't do. State Street is a wide gray band across Chicago's forehead at night. A white-faced mother moon clothes shakes skyscrapers in gray silk. At night when the clocks yawn and the hours get late, get lazy. At night when the jungle's a symphony in grays. Oh, Mother Moon, Mother of Earth, bring of silver good gifts. Bring a veil of sun dust to wrap this Congo and bring a shawl of moon, moonis, moon mist to close Chicago's body. Between the covers of books lie the bones of yesterday. Today is a new dollar in my city is money mad. Across the street from Ebenezer Baptist Church, Women with cast on faces peddle love in a flat above William's funeral home. Six couples sway to the St. Louis Blues, two doors away from the South Side Bank. Three bit penny brown men scorch their guts with four bit whiskey. Dr. Jackson buys a link and his neighbor buys a second buy second hand shoes. The artist who paints this town must use a checkered canvas. Tired looking houses of brownstone, ramshackle flats with sightless eyes, a surface car throws a handful of white sparks at crack, cracked red bricks, an L train roars oaths at backyard clotheslines, mornings on South Parkway flat sit like silent cats, watching the little green mice of buses running up and down the boulevard. And only the grass has heard the secrets of vacant lots. This song has no tune. You cannot hum it. This song has no words. You cannot sing it. This song everybody knows. Nobody knows. It is in a pattern of brown faces at Wabash, YMCA, a 35th Street gambling place, a parkway theater. If you get it or you don't, it's a melody of everything and nothing. I saw 12 stars sitting along the edge of a four-story flat. I saw a moon held by leafless tree fingers. I heard a shot tear huge holes in a blanket of silence. Later, just a little later, the moon got away and the stars stepped back into the skies. There will always be new wordless songs, new humless tunes. Chicago sings these songs each day. Chicago who wears the skyscrapers like a necklace. Next up for Glimpses of Night by Frank Marshall Davis. Part one. Eagerly like a woman hurrying to a lover, night comes to the room of the world and lies yielding and content against the cool round face of the moon. Act two. 
Night is a curious child wandering between earth and sky, creeping in windows and doors, daubing the entire neighborhood with purple paint. Day is an apologetic mother, cloth in hand, following after. Section 3. Peddling from door to door, night sells black bags of peppermint stars, heaping cones of a vanilla moon until its wares are gone, then shuffles homeward, jiggling the gray corns of date bag. Part 4. Night's brittle song, silver thin, shatters into a billion fragments of quiet shadows of the blazing jazz of the morning sun. And finally, Self-Portrait by Frank Marshall Davis. I would be a painter with words creating sharp portraits on a wide canvas of your mind. Imagine images of those things shaped through my eyes that interest me. But being a 10th American in this democracy, I sometimes sketch a miniature, though I, though I contract for a mural. Of course you understand this democracy. One man is good as another from log cabin to White House. Poor boy to corporate president, Hoover and Brower with one vote each. A free country, complete equality, yeah and the rich get tax refunds, the poor get relief checks. As for myself, I pay five cents for a daily synopsis of current history, two bits in a late lowdown on Hollywood, twist the dial for Stardust or Chikotsky. And with each bleacher stub, I reserve the right to sell, to shout, kill a bum at the empire. Wherefore, Am I different from nine other Americans? But listen, you don't don't worry about me. I rate. I'm convert four seven one one at Beulah Baptist Church. I'm Social Security number three three seven one six three four five eight in Washington. Thank you, Mr. God and Mr. Roosevelt. And another thing, no matter what happens, I too can always call in a policeman. That is my salute to Frank Marshall Davis, who, whose impact on history was significant because he impacted the man who would be the first president of color in the United States of America, Barack Obama, when Barack Obama was a teenager living in Hawaii in high school before he tra traced off to college and to his world, Frank Marshall Davis impacted Barack Obama's life enough to have Barack mention Mr. Davis in songs from my father, his autobiography before he became president of the United States while he was a senator from Illinois. Have a great day, have a great Thursday. Look forward to look forward to talking to you talking tomorrow on my in his words, my voice. Our black history need not be a black mystery.